All right, we got a hot summer, uh, hazy, crazy, lazy days of summer afternoon. You got Dang Bagman and Eugene Cannabis TV with our special friend, Reverend Will. We've Here had we some are. wide things going on this weekend. Reverend, Reverend Will made it to the uh, get on the stage on Friday, and uh, I, I missed it, but Reverend Will was there, and the music was good. Music was good. You know, I ended up stumbling on Willamette Street there. I couldn't believe it. I actually fell right in the middle of everything. Things didn't get started until about 4 o'clock, but once they got started, things picked up. You know, it was a little too hot for people to be out in the middle of the day. Besides, it was a Friday, so after 4 o'clock, things picked up really well. By the time the night was over, there was a lot of people there, a lot of people dancing, having fun. Doing some bubbles, throwing little balls around, you know, it was nice because it was really family. It was great. The uh, other thing about it was that uh, the people who were there all worked together to make it happen. And that's the one thing that we as a culture really need to learn is that we all need to get past our problems with certain people, anyone, and make things happen for the better. Yeah, that's, you def that's the way it has to work. I really hated to miss that. I was counting on seeing it, but got sick and didn't make it down there at all. So Bad gas was great. They oh. kicked it out again. They were awesome. Oh, wow. I missed all oh, those are great guys. Yeah, those, yeah. Uh, Bad gas has been on our show before, and, yep. uh, of course, at the Hip Fest last year. And uh, the... <laughs> Uh, Bad Gas, yeah, that's our uh, Southern Rock, uh, or, see, Northern Oregon band that plays Southern, or uh, Southern Rock, that's it. <laughs> so, yeah, they're good guys. And uh, then today, Reverend Will and I were at the uh, THC clinic, uh, medical patients uh, getting their cards. It's always a unique experience. Uh, I think we went around, we went through 20, um, I can't remember, 23. 23. 23 uh, uh, patients this, this time. Hadn't been that many in the past. I mean, I've been a few more in the past. I've been there. Uh, but uh, anyway, we had a great time and uh, <clears throat> helped a lot of uh, patients and, and uh, met some interesting people. The thing is that, once again, it was interesting. Like our friend Lauren, we got a chance to meet somebody. and. Mm -hmm. After we talked to him for a while, found out he's got 37 acres of really beautiful land that he's offering if we wanted to do something really sweet like a patient's retreat where we could have patients show up and their caregivers and we could all sit around and talk about which strains are beneficial for which kinds of illnesses and problems and talking about the different illnesses like we were just talking to our friend Sean who was telling us that in California there's uh, the psychological aspect of uh, illnesses that are more respected there than they are here. Everything here is pretty much based on the physical aspect if you happen to have a physical illness or disease. So, <clears throat> you know, seeing what's going on, we also found out that you could show up at the THC Foundation today you can get yourself a card for Oregon. You can get yourself a card for Washington. You can get yourself a card for California. That's right. One-stop shopping. thought it was pretty interesting that you <laughs> would then be able to travel from Oregon mm -hmm. to California to go to the dispensaries. You could fly, and you would still be able to use your cards. And it only costs you 100 bucks per state. <clears throat> Hundred dollars per state. That's Washington or California. Right. Oregon, it's still it's two, uh, the well. No, you're right. THC it is hundred bucks. You're right. Bucks. I'm sorry. Hundred dollars all three states. You're right. That's but the right. THC Foundation charges yeah, us anywhere right, up to yeah. two hundred dollars <laughs> for you to uh, go through their program. So that's interesting because in the past it's been kind of a gray area. I've had people say, well, if I have a California card, uh, will I get in trouble in Oregon if I possess, and that kind of thing. It's kind of a gray area. Uh, technically, uh, the answer is no. Uh, they're not, they don't have the protection, but I think most experiences, uh, law enforcement are going to mess with it because they know that it is a bona fide patient in one state, so they could certainly sort of, uh, uh, prove that there uh, would be a patient in the, the state that they're in. So. Uh, but anyway, it's interesting how uh, it's uh, getting more and more um, blended, I guess you'd say, or however you want to put it. But uh, the left coast, all three states are together. So that's, right. Uh, that's the cool. only sticky wicket in the process is the Mine. federal government. Well, well yeah. you know, yeah. the federal government just is lame. You know, they don't listen. They don't care to listen to the truth. Uh, they're not accountable. 
I mean, come on, folks, wake up to the fact that from 9-11 on, you know, your government has been lying to you big time, and it's not just about pot, and you're not paying attention, and you're basically being laughed at by the rest of the world. Now, personally, you don't mind being laughed at by the rest of the world. It just shows your ignorance, because understand, we are supposed to be the standard bearers at this point in time, and... When you have lies being as prevalent as they are, oh, we don't have any federal marijuana patients. <laughs> Talk to Elvie, she's a medical marijuana patient. You know? uh, the whole thing is that we have to hold our representatives and stuff accountable for their lack of desire to help us get our medicine. I always go back right to the very beginning and the reason that the people of this state supported what we were doing is because we had patients who needed medicine. The state was supposed to help the patients get medicine. There is nothing that the state of Oregon has done to help us get medicine. Everything that they've done has been to control the size, the amount, how you get it, how you transport it, has nothing to do with getting us our medicine. They burn it when they arrest it, when they go out and grab it in the fields or grab it in somebody's homes. We've asked them, and they're afraid of the federal government coming down on them and taking away money for potholes or whatever it is that they give us money for if we don't do the dance that they make us do. Potholes meaning holes in the street, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And we can always make the jokes and they're a lot better than getting too serious. But understand, folks, you know, we really need to make a difference here. We have lots of patients who are hurting because they don't have herb. I mean, we listen to some of those stories today. Yeah, right. There was a lady there that uh, her caregiver is giving her uh, an ounce a month, and uh, the quality is extremely low. Mediocre and then stuff. if she wants another ounce, he's going to charge her $400 for that second ounce. So, uh, yeah. first of all, the state law states that it can't be traded for any consideration, so I don't know how, how he, that grower would, can say that or try to get away with that. But that's the kind of thing. Uh, there are, there's a lot of uh, good giving people in this uh, medical marijuana community, but at the same time, there's a lot that are taking advantage, and we hear about it all the time. Yeah, and then we end up blowing it for ourselves sometimes in this process. Like I said from the very beginning, you know, I would not have given away the concessions that we have to LE law enforcement at this point in time. I mean, understand for me, it's a medicine, like any other medicine that's out there. I mean, for me personally, it's also a spiritual medicine, but I don't even have the right to start talking about that because they just say, you can't do it, Will. You can have your church, but you can't have your sacrament. Now, I understand. I was just called by Lincoln City because I did a wedding ceremony over the weekend, and they wanted to know all this information about where I live and uh, where my church existed, where it started from and stuff. And I just want to know how many of the Catholic church get, churches get called whenever they do a wedding ceremony to know the validity of their uh, church, where it started from. And, uh, you know, to me, uh, that, that's the kind of crap that we have to go through in this process. Once again, folks, I tell you, we live to a different standard and you don't realize it because you're not part of our process. Apparently, you're not part of our culture. The one that says we'd like a peaceful and clean world to live in, and we'd like to have the respect that we deserve, and we don't get. I mean, understand, we're not supposed to work, okay? We're not supposed to drive. But if we sit at home, we're nothing more than couch potatoes. Well, if you can't drive and you can't work, what else are you supposed to do? I guess we're just supposed to die and go away. Well, isn't that discrimination? And if it's discrimination, especially in this city, which claims to be so diverse, well, why don't you show it? Why don't you get some gumption? Let's do a citywide initiative and make marijuana legal here in Eugene, Oregon. And from there, you know, we can see where it goes. But 
Now, if Salem or Portland can jump on the bandwagon as well, you know, let's do city initiatives all across the country. Bag trying to get the state to do it. You know, to me, I thought the attorney generals would be the perfect avenue for us to go through this because my understanding from them is they're supposed to interpret the law for us. Well, you know, if they're supposed to interpret the law and the people say, hey, this is what we want, then you make it so it's working. You don't sit there and go, well, gee, the feds won't let us do this. So, I mean, once again, I know that there are ways of making this happen. And part of it is by all the groups working together. Uh, THC Foundation didn't impress me again today because they held their clinic two miles away from Voter Power who has a building sitting there empty. It doesn't make sense to me, you know, but uh, no one listens anyway. I mean, that's quite apparent by the fact that we don't get emails in here. Um, I don't find people calling me and ringing my phone off the hook going, Hey, well, I like what you had to say, man. What can we do to make a difference? Well, let's help. You know, has anybody ever put a citywide initiative together out there? Help us put an initiative together. That's right. That's a simple one. That's right. There's a lot of places to start. There's a lot of things we all can do, whether it's small or big. We all can do, do something. Uh, I like to say, I remember our, our friend Madeline, Oregon Normal, who says, put the bong down and uh, pick up a pencil and paper, you know, or, or you know, uh, Invest, invest the price of an eighth into uh, helping the movement. There's a good start. Right. Yeah, th that is a good start. I would really like to see if maybe Willamette Valley Normal or one of the other groups here in town would, uh, I understand one of the groups here in town did adopt a bike path or... That's right, yeah. The uh, Oregon Green Free uh, Eugene chapter, uh, I think, yeah, Highway 58. I don't remember the mile markers, but uh, they've taken up a section of uh, Highway 58. And, Thank uh, you. Yep, they've been cleaning it, and I believe uh, they're about to get their sign up. They have to clean it a few times to prove that they're sincere, I guess. Right. And they're getting their sign, I understand. So uh, it'll be up. It'll say uh, uh, somebody, you know, road clean by Oregon Green Free. I won't say anything about medical marijuana, but it'll say Oregon Green Free. So, yeah, it's a great organizations out there doing a lot of good work, and uh, <clears throat> you can certainly join uh, or, uh, the uh, Willamette Valley Normal Chapter. We meet the last uh, Saturday of every month at 10, uh, 12, 10 Willamette, 2 p.m. It's on a Saturday, the last Saturday of every month. I mean, excuse me, the fourth Saturday of every month. <clears throat> and uh, then we've got the, uh, we usually at Saturday Market, uh, have a, the information uh, booth there on the plaza. We missed it a few times uh, due to various reasons, but uh, we should be there next weekend, hopefully. What about that uh, little surprise we got about mamas today? Uh, yes, interesting. Uh, we were at the clinic, and somebody asked, uh, said that they had heard through mamas that there was a dispensary opening and had opened in Eugene. It was opening or had opened? I think it said had opened. Had opened. Uh, first we've ever heard of it. Uh, I certainly heard, and Will, has, or Will hasn't heard of it. Uh, <laughs> but we'd like to hear about it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on I, down. I have heard there is one in Coos Bay. Uh, I've talked to people who have been there. I haven't seen it myself, but I have talked to people who have been there. Got one now. Uh, so I, I guess there's a few working. Uh, uh, According to the rumors. But, so, uh, mamas, please get a hold of us. Come on here and let people know where you're at and what you're doing so that they can get involved. You that's know? right. We sure do have the dispensary like initiative, I-28, which we're gathering signatures for. Again, come down to the booth, the Saturday Market Information booth. Uh, grab a couple petitions and help gather signatures. Uh, uh, this is going to be patience and need to get this thing on and uh, help to help each other. That's how we're going to do it is work and uh, do it ourselves. Well, the politicians aren't going to do it, so uh, you, we're going to do it ourselves. Sean's going to be coming on. Maybe he can tell us some of these goodies and things that they have in the California dispensaries that we can look forward to once we can uh, open that door because... That's right. We've got Sean probably... coming up here real quick and uh, up out of California so we okay. can find out what it's like uh, down at our friends of the south. So, so we're uh, wrapping it up, right? Appreciate Reverend Will being with us this evening. So we're going to get out here and take a break and uh, go out and go. I think we're going to be out standing on our field. Okay. In the back there, yeah. Sounds good to me. Let's get out there, listen to a little music, and uh, bring Sean in. A man yeah. who you bet. smokes a joint with strangers from everyone he meets. With every hit he takes, another friend he makes. Odds are you would like him if you met him. Marijuana man, marijuana man, he's rolling up another. 
Okay, we're back. So like a bad dad. We're back and we've got our friend Sean. And uh, by the way, I want to mention real quick. If you want to know why this guy's wearing a bag over his head, go to the website, eugenecannabistv.org, and read about it. I don't want to take the time to explain and tell the story, but it's on the website. Check it out. So Sean is back with us again. Our friend from California has come up two years in a row to help us in the Hemp Fest and uh, has uh, spent quite a bit of time down there and crowding around, uh, lurking around disp dispensaries. Yeah, lurking around the dispensaries, <laughs> seeing which so, one gives the best stuff. Yeah, tell us about the dispensaries and how things are different and some of the comments that you were uh, jumping up and down or off camera wanted to speak up about. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Cal I, I was listening to you and Reverend Will about the $100 thing, and down in California, they re the... The um, medical marijuana card ranges from $79 to $200. It just depends on what doctor you go see. And as a matter of fact, I carry mine with me all the time, hoping that, like law enforcement, they, they'll say, well, he's traveling from one state to the other, and this is what it looks like. From looks a good. certified it's all in doctor. Got a nice gold seal on it. Looks nice great. gold seal, if you can get a nice shot of that. And this cost forty nine dollars because it was. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Oh yeah. You got a picture ID and the whole bit. Yeah, they put my ID card on it so that mm -hmm. they know who I am and everything. But they uh, charge forty nine dollars for a reinstatement at this place here, and I can bring in the card next week to say where it is for people that are traveling down south. Mm -hmm. And Oakland just did the tax initiative by eighty percent, so they're going to start charging people at dispensaries. And some dispensaries in California have already started doing that. But the quality and the quantity is, is good. And we were talking about it with the LA gem that we had out here last week and the West Coast Leaf. So we, we do, you know, once the doors are open, believe me, you guys will, will have the initiative pass and the marijuana thing. And the grower that you were telling the 400 an ounce because she needs another ounce, mm -hmm. That's wrong, man. I mean, if you're a oh, caregiver, yeah. you shouldn't you, you shouldn't charge your patients. You know, I mean, I'm 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 a a a um, very compassionate. To me, THC stands for the heavens creation, and 420 stands for for the planet to the people zero stress, or zero death, mm -hmm. or T4C is the is the seed, and H2O is the water. So I have a lot of different little things that I could write a book about, about how you could use the THC, the THC um, lettering and the 420 and the 215. But if you guys just remain faithful and, and, and don't give up, the doors are opening. It took 20 years and now it's opening. And I was just telling him here that once they know I'm here, chances are that a lot of things will start happening. I just have good karma. I mean, I, I feel I have good karma, and I hope people will, will like, put out there, and I get people, people come to the booth and get the, get the things to go register, because you guys do need it. I think the whole country needs it, but it's, like he said, one city at a time. I mean, it was L.A., Hollywood, and San Diego, and the Supreme Court. San Diego got shot out of the Supreme Court when they tried to say they didn't want it in their county, and the Supreme Court said, Psst. No, you guys, it's it's legal here, you know. And yeah, yeah, that was a big win, big win yeah. for us. Uh, San Diego didn't want to enforce the law, and and and, and, then, and then one time the CHP lost the case when they pulled over a guy that was transporting medical marijuana, and Normal took took uh, took it on, and the CHP lost. So now that's they can't search cars or anything like that without a warrant. So we're, we're proud that we're actually winning a, what they think is a losing battle, but it's not. It's and not. these dispensaries, <clears throat> it's kind of hard for us probably to imagine what a dispensary actually likes in California, but I've seen articles, read, seen pictures. They have edibles in there. Yes, I mean, not have. just like a piece of candy or a sucker. I mean, they've got edibles like you wouldn't believe, both pastries and candies and... And drinks. Drink, uh, drinks, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> Ice <amazing>. cream. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's amazing. Uh, different ways and things they can make out of it. Yeah. So, yeah, there is. There's a lot of things. That, and we do have the dispensary initiative here in the state of Oregon, as I mentioned earlier, in I-28. We're gathering signatures for it. Uh, I think we're about a third of the way on that campaign and a little less than a year to go. So, Please, people, tight. come and help sign up. Come yep. gra grab, a thing, gra grab one of those and go <clears throat> to the U of O or wherever and 
get people to sign up, you know. I mean, even, right. even local yep. stores, will if they'll have you on there, go there and sign up. Ch even churches now are opening up in, in the east, on the East Coast because they see patients dying and, and they realize that, you know, that we can't have people dying. It's not spiritually right. So even some religions are now opening up and accepting marijuana as, as a, um, as a, um, oh, as a, a relief, yeah, as a medicine or a relief so that the mm -hmm. spirit won't die in pain or vein or whatever. I was reading that in one of the articles the other day that there's like me the Methodists, the Lutherans, some Catholics, some Protestants are opening up in like Nebraska or something. So the churches should should open up and look more into what marijuana can do because it is the heaven's creation. You know, you got to realize that THC, the heaven's creation. Mm -hmm. I remember a friend of ours years ago told me uh, he thought that we should be doing more outreach to the churches because Christians know what it's like to be persecuted, so therefore they could uh, have empathy for uh, cannabis uh, users uh, in general uh, being persecuted. So, you, you would think that, but because know. we became such a materialistic world now, people have got forgotten the real values in life, mm -hmm. like, you know, the environment, you know, everything, the, the water, the, the earth, the air, the fire, the water, unconditional love, you know, the four elements entwined with the unconditional love thing. It's like our friend Bobby Sixgro, I quote, quote him all the time, he says, if we're going to make a plant illegal, let's make something really nasty illegal that we could all get behind, like poison oak, let's make poison <laughs> oak illegal, uh, right. be against the law to have it, you know, possess it, uh, lose your property if, it's, if we find it on your property. You know. Well, yeah, it's the same way with coffee, you know, some people don't think coffee's a drug, but, you know, you need your coffee fix or nicotine or sugar, diabetics need, you know, can oh, die yeah. of sugar, so there, there's a lot of legal things out there that are actually drugs, but people are so used to them now that they don't consider them drugs. They consider it a common household thing. That's why I think actually the Food and Drug Administration should look more into marijuana than the DEA, you know, because you can look at it in the, in the food industry and in the drug industry. And so they, sh they should get up off their old computers and their desks and look into more aspects about this because it's, it's been in about the dark too long. And the thing about the dispensaries of California, we hear about dispensaries getting busted, but uh, from what I read, uh, it's really a very, very small percentage of the right. dispensaries are getting busted, and generally the ones that are getting busted are being busted because they're not following the, the rules. That, that's right. Uh, there are many, many, many dispensaries that have operated for many years without any problems at all. Yeah, we, we got dispensaries closing down every once in a while for the simple fact is they didn't go by the guidelines or they're opening up shops and they don't meet specific standards with the city or they're not able to pay certain taxes. but also, in some dispensaries, they got the tobacco license so that it looks like they're running tobacco instead of herb. And they got the Los, and another one, they got the Los Angeles County uh, Police Commission so that the Los Angeles city knows that they're there and everything. And they got, you know, they got, um, they got the proper permits to where that they can sell medical cannabis or spiritual cannabis or however you need to see. They got hash there. They got... You know, I mean, you go in and you describe what you need, and they talk to you about it. They're they're very very professional and courtesy with it. And once you guys get into it here, I mean, I it's, it's wonderful that you guys got the hemp bill passed. So I think the, uh, California should get the hemp bill passed now, and you guys should pass the marijuana bill, and you guys could have a nice big West Coast thing, and the government can see what's going on. And chances are, they probably try to take money from us because. We're doing so good, <laughs> you know. Oh, I mean, yeah. we won't need grants no more because we know how to do it, you know. I mean, it's like the Indians when they tried to kill off the Indians, but they came up with a better solution. They got the uh, they got their their land with um, with those casinos on them, you know. I mean, they know how to make money, so why can't we? Why can't we survive by helping ourselves by treating ourselves with medical marijuana and, and, and trying to get the hemp going to make clothes, you know, and sponsor me to like ride cross country on a bike or get sponsorship in the race cars or, you know, get, get some really good stuff out there to where like the beer industry has or the cigarette industry has because we know it's a good cause and if it gets out there far enough, well, the advertisements will speak for themselves, people. 
they will speak for themselves. Speaking of hemp, uh, we've got some hemp fest coming up. Seattle Hemp Fest has double check this on me. I believe it's August 8th through the 9th. Double check on that date, but I think that's right. And uh, you go to uh, seattlehempfest.com. It's really easy to find. they got a great website. Uh, Two-day event. Uh, I think it's close to 300,000 people uh, each weekend that uh, that event goes on every year. It's the largest hemp fest in the world. And then uh, September 5th and 6th is the Portland Hemp Stock, and uh, that's another uh, great event, a little closer to us. Uh, so those are two events that are coming up, the first of each of uh, the two months, uh, next two weekends, and I mean next two months. So uh, support your local hemp fest, and uh, I always like to say if there's something you're really interested in and they have a, a trade show for that item, it seems natural that you'd person to want to go. Well, if you're into cannabis in any, or hemp in any aspect, uh, go to a hemp fest because you'll see, see things there, products there that you'll never see anywhere else. You'll see innovations you didn't know existed. So, uh, including our, uh, our uh, uh, handheld vaporizer that uh, we've been showing some images of and that uh, our friends uh, gave to, to us. So there's some great ideas out there, great innovations, and that's where to find yes, them is is. these hemp stocks, uh, I mean hemp stocks, the hemp fest. And, uh, trade show for cannabis so <clears throat> it's hard to beat <clears throat> but anyway uh, <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> so the hemp fest is behind us and now we're looking towards next year and uh, we certainly uh, still could use our use some help we need to do some fundraising we still have debts to pay from past years that we need to uh, take care of <clears throat> so if anybody out there have any ideas for fundraising let us know uh, we have had some Our fundraising watch. parties in the past, but they haven't uh, paid off real well. So, but we're open to doing that again, and we can just make some money. That's we could always do a car wash. That's what a lot of <coughs> yeah. There's there. the car wash idea. We've had a garage sale. We tried that one before uh, with moderate success. Uh, so yeah, there's different things uh, uh, we can do and, and that kind of thing. So. Uh, so anyway, uh, and that's the, uh, see what else is coming up. Oh yes, the, uh, coming up this year yet too, it'll be in uh, December, the Oregon Cannabis Medical Awards, uh, that's Oregon Normals uh, Medical Marijuana Cannabis Cup, uh, medical cannabis they call it of course. All right, we got one of those in California as a matter of fact every year. Uh, this one, yeah, and it's a great event. Uh, there's a lot of working on, uh, they're working on, working on, uh, trying to find out what strains are. And that, by the way, I meant to right. discuss that when but we're talking about dispensaries. One of the advantages of dispensaries is, is that by working with these different strains, they get a feel of what different strains do. So right. if a patient goes in and say, for instance, they're using medical marijuana to, uh, for chronic pain, they can tell the dispensary that the dispensary can recommend certain yeah. strains that are noted for being specific and really good for that. So That's if they don't smoke a lot of different strains in one session, then they might be able to... That's true. But instead of... You know, cry all soon. If any no guitar is all he can't afford When he gets up under the lights